known as CryptoJo101 from Twitter and here are what with the first step of our tutorial. I am temporarily from a different laptop as uh, um, my ordinary one does not have a micro SD so I'm just using my wife one uh, just to um, set up uh, the uh, micro SD that we're going to be using to put for the very first time the Raspberry Pi, uh, update the firmware and enable it to eventually um, load the OS from um, the SSD drive. So uh, I guess you guys can all see uh, this is the home page of the project we're going to be using and following uh, to set up our block producer node uh, Cardano on our Raspberry Pis. Uh, we just scroll down uh, this is just like a, a brief recap. This is going to be looking definitely different uh, in the next few days as I'm up continuously updating it but the very first step that we have to do and is pretty much on the final version is the flash the SD card and update the Raspberry Pi firmware. So we click on the docs, that should take to our new page, and here is briefly uh, listed what are the steps that we have to do. The first thing we have to do is to download and install the RPI Imager, um, the RPI stands for Raspberry Pis, so we click that one here, um, this is the new page that loaded, um, you can just very briefly scroll down and check what this one is all about. I'm going to be downloading the version for MacBook, uh, for Mac OS, I've actually done this one already, I'm going to do that again just to demo how things work. That should be relatively fast. So we open the DMG, if you have Windows or Unix or whatever, this is going to look a little bit different, but uh, it should be as very simple and straightforward. So in case of macOS, I'm just moving in the Raspberry Pi, it says I have already one, this will not be prompt to you, uh, but I'm going to go replace and just simulate a full install. Uh, you can now close this one and then close also the uh, uh, installation. We close this one and then if we go uh, command space, we're gonna have the list of application. I am just gonna go for Imager. Here we go, Raspberry Pi Imager. Before clicking on this one, remember to insert your SD card. I'm actually doing this as I'm talking. When I insert the SD card, the SD card now, when I click on the Imager, and hopefully this is gonna load. There we go, it's coming up. It tells you that this is something downloaded by the, from the internet. Do you still want to open it? Say yes, because this is the official visual site and don't, uh, not anything dodgy. So the, the website is raspberrypi.org, you can see it here. So operating system, let's choose the OS, is the default one is fine, Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. I know the Raspberry Pi is 64, but we only need this one to update the firmware. So we can choose this one, uh, choose a storage, uh, my SD card uh, is a 64 gig, so we select this one and then eventually write. This is going to say, this is going to destroy all the data on the card. If you want to still go ahead, I'd say yes. Now you're prompted for uh, uh, password permission because this is going to be accessing on um, a protected uh, uh, device, so you need the admin permission. So you enter your password if it's asked, then you press OK. Now this process is going to take a little while uh, because it's both downloading and writing the OS on the card. So it's going to take just a few minutes. I'll see you soon as I am going to speed up this little part. Right, and as now is verifying the, um, the, the OS has installed the SD card, um, we uh, are almost ready to launch for the first time our Raspberry Pi. Uh, we're just waiting for uh, the verify process uh, to complete. But before uh, um, removing the SD card and uh, uh, starting our Raspberry Pis, um, what we have to do is to uh, just create a little file into the root folder of the SD card uh, so that we will automatically enable the um, SSH daemon uh, because we will do everything in headless mode. This means that we will not connect any uh, keyboard, mouse, screen or anything to the Raspberry Pi but we will do absolutely everything from remote as if this was a real server into the cloud. Um, of course Raspberry Pi is the Raspberry uh, Raspbian OS as it is installed 
it does not allow uh, remote um, connectivity by default. So uh, because we want to do everything in headless mode, as I mentioned, we have to do something new. So what we do, because uh, the, the imager automatically also um, um, uh, disconnect the SD card, what we have to do is, uh, I'm actually, you can't see this, but I'm actually doing it. I just removed the SD card and I'm connecting it again, at least on the Mac. I don't know if on Linux or on Windows, this is gonna be different. But the chances are you will have to remove and replug your SD card. At this point, I open my Finder and I open Boot, and you can see that the card is here. And the fastest and quickest, quickest, quickest way of doing this, at least on macOS, is to open a terminal. Go on the. Uh, I'm gonna increase a little bit the character, and you see, yeah, this should be enough. And then I'm gonna go CD volumes and then I'm gonna make a list, and then there is the boot. I'm gonna change it into boot, and then all that I have to do, this is basically the root uh, uh, entry point on the SD card, all that I have to do is just touch SSH. And this is all that is required to create one file that is called SSH, it's an empty file, I don't, do, I don't need to do anything else. This is all that is needed for uh, the Raspbian to boot, and know that it has to enable the uh, uh, secure SSH uh, client, the OpenSSL client. I'm gonna be exiting this one and I'm now remove the card, uh, the mounting point. This is now turned off and it means that I can safely remove the SD card from uh, the laptop. Thank you very much for following me. I'll see you in two minutes on the larger screen. Take care, bye. Cool, we're back now um, after uh, um, installing the Raspbian operating system on the micro SD. What I'm gonna do is, uh, this is an adapter with the micro SD inside. Uh, I'm actually gonna do this way. This is an adapter with the micro SD inside. As you can see, the SD is here. I can remove this one and it's actually here. And I can now install, it's something that I haven't shown before the uh, pocket for the uh, the socket for the micro SD is down here. So I can now insert the micro SD here. The first thing that I'm gonna do is to plug the Ethernet cable here. And I can now then plug the power adapter here. As soon as I do this, the lights will turn on and the Pi is now uh, started. I'm gonna use just a little bit of paper, piece of paper uh, to uh, put the Pi on uh, and it should be safe enough. There is nothing else that I need to connect. So we go back to the main screen, actually back to this one instead. <clears throat> this should hopefully be big enough for you to read. I'm, go I'm just gonna increase a little bit the character just to be sure. At this moment in time, uh, we have done insert SD, installed Raspbian, extra extract micro SD. We created, we just touched the SSD file into the root. Uh, what we have to do now is basically power VSP, insert the micro SD into the Pi, connect the Pi uh, to the LAN, this is LAN, LAN, the other cable. We just won't bother doing the Wi Fi because if you're serious about this, you will definitely use a wire, not Wi-Fi, and risk to lose packets. And we just powered on the Pi. Now, the next step is with the Pi running, uh, we have to find the IP address of the Pi and we have to SSH into it so that we can start um, operating on it. We, this uh, SSH onto the Pi is divided into two steps. The first one, we have to find the IP address of the Pi and the second one, um, we have to find our IP address first, then we have to look, based on our IP address, we will be looking for the IP address of the Pi, and then we will be able to SSH into it. SSH is very simple, uh, because at the moment, username and password are the default one, and I'll show you in a minute how to do this. We will use a combination of IP config that is gonna be reading our IP configuration, and nmap that is gonna be basically losing, looking for uh, um, all the IP addresses that are on the net. What we will do first is config en0, and I'm gonna be doing this in a, in a second. If you do have a Mac, this, this is the way you should be finding what your um, IP address on the Ethernet interface is. 
um, otherwise we will just come through all the uh, all the um, LAN um, configuration we'll try to look for uh, the IP address the IP address is basically this one on the line that starts with INET INET is the INET address um, and this is the IP number in this case is 192.160.094 this is actually the IP address of uh, my private network at home of my laptop uh, usually something looks like this one I could there could be one usually here um, or there is 100 or, but this is usually what you will have at home other times there is another type of uh, uh, addresses that starts with 172.18 this could be another type uh, of IP addresses that can be used in a private network but uh, uh, once that we've done this uh, we will use a sudo and map sp blah 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 and this one is going to basically be the first three parts of our IP address and this is called uh, subnet mask where this part basically is the variable part and we will try to see if the uh, raspberry pi is actually down um, here um, so we will go back to the sorry about that we'll go back into the eye there let's clear this one i did some tests earlier on just to prove the concept so what i'm going to be doing is um is a if config if config dash a actually i'm gonna go straight away on a e n zero and as i showed you this is what i see if uh, you don't have e n zero on your own linux or anything else we just do if config dash a that means all and we will have all the things all the ip address oh sorry all the interfaces uh, but there is too much noise what so what we're going to be doing is to grab just for inet and as you can see in my case i have two of them so forget the 127 because this is a private loop uh, this is the loopback interface so we don't need this one we need something like this one or this one in fact i do have both my wi-fi and my ethernet connected uh, ethernet cable connected um, i just don't care which one of the two we need because what really matters to us is the first three blocks so once that we have this one basically we can start to listen for the all the ip addresses on the network and try to find out who's uh, the, the the one that is just being taken by the raspberry Pis. by all means guys if you know better ways to find the ip address based on your router or whatever just go down the path i'm just doing this for people that i don't even know how to access their um router at home and where you're definitely going to be seeing much more information about all connected devices so right we have this one now uh, so what we're going to be doing is sudo and map the reason why i'm going to be using sudo is because for some reason it gives me additional information so we're going to go down that path so sudo and map sp then 192.168.0 and then zero again instead of like instead of putting the last three numbers we just put zero again and because this is going to be part of the um what's it called of the um subnet mask uh, and then we go enter it's going to be prompting you for password you just enter it and that's fine and then this is basically all the uh, the biases that have connected as you can see up here i have four raspberry pis and this is basically my uh, cluster of raspberry pis where the actual um block producing node is running my stake pool easy one is running so i just take the occasion for telling you i'm a stake pool operator if you have um cardano i would really really love and appreciate if you could delegate to your wallet to my um staking pool uh, i'll be absolutely delighted thank you very much so going back to this uh, the pool is easy one the ticket is easy one uh, going back to this one i actually have uh, two more uh, raspberry Pis connected uh, for some reason though this is funny and um, the actual uh, raspberry Pi is only one or the other one i actually don't know where the other one is coming maybe there is another raspberry Pi connected somewhere into my um, network but anyway <clears throat> let's see which one of those two ip addresses is i bet you is the 215 so let's try to do ssh dash uh, l the ssh 192168 dash zero dot two one five sorry i'm saying dash instead of dot dash l pi right so i forgot to do this um i did this already once so this is signaling me so forget about this i'm gonna be fixing this in a minute b i this one down Doo -doo 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 -doo. apologies we'll do this one again that's it the a fingerprint has been found 
so the SSH client is actually telling me this is the fingerprint do you feel like you want to trust this one uh, because it can't establish the authenticity we can trust this we just installed the SSD uh, the operating system this SSD card ourselves so I'm gonna type yes and then I will have to enter the password into this one and the password the Raspberry and once that we have done this boom we are into the Raspberry Pis so this operation of accepting the fingerprint it needs to be done twice we do this the first time now uh, because that's when we install the Raspbian and then once we connect the SSD card we will have to install yet another operating system the IP address is going to be the same so we will see that error again but the operating system on it is going to be changing so the fingerprint will change and, uh, and our SSH client will inform us that it has changed so it's informing us that could, there is a chance of a man in the middle attack uh, the reality is that it's all fine we're just uh, assigning possibly the same IP address to the same Raspberry Pi but we're changing the operating system on it so we don't have to worry absolutely about anything. With regards to the, um, what's it called, with the additional security thing, I will postpone them to a different um, uh, episode of the tutorials. For the moment, what we wanna do is just to enable the, update the firmware of this Raspberry Pi, and then prepare ourselves for the SSD. So at this point, what we have to do is just basically issue a full upgrade of the Raspberry Pis, both of the operating system and uh, of the firmware that is a specific step of the um, of the upgrade of the, up, of the upgrade so let's go back to the documentation that is here the steps are um, here so it's basically sudo apt get update and this is basically gonna uh, fetch the latest and greatest um, snapshot of the um, the software that we want and then the, la the, the next one that we have to uh, execute is sudo apt get dist upgrade this is basically do a full upgrade firmware included so we just take it this is gonna take a few minutes so I'm gonna be launching this one and are we gonna be waiting for this to complete I'll check my cell phone in the meantime Now it's asking, it is asking us if we want to go ahead with this. I'm gonna tap yes, and it's just gonna go ahead. Um, I will possibly change the documentation so that this uh, Y is not gonna be asked. I will just go like dash Y uh, straight away, um, and we will not have to do this. I'm gonna suspend the video for now. There are gonna be like a few minutes of update, and then I'll come back. And we are back now again uh, after uh, the update is complete. Um, I actually have to uh, double check and see if instead of this upgrade, I have to run a different command. I was just checking the documentation now and I think it's up at the full upgrade. And let's see if uh, um, sudo up t full upgrade. No, it's uh, this upgrade is actually the correct one. So we know that now the system is fully upgraded. So let's check now what's the next step into this one is. Right, we got at the end of the first part of our tutorial. And we, as, as a brief recap, we got, um, as a brief recap, we got uh, the, um, we got the, um, there we go, we got the, the Pi set up, uh, we managed to boot it, and we upgraded all the things. The next step will be to actually enable the SSD card. Thank you very much, and I'll see you soon in the next episode.